as fast as possible, we should try to talk with each other again. Also, people who found themselves in a different camp, <laughs> who the people who so we have to have to restart the dialogue and 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 the, and the the dialectical process between each other. Uh, that's one thing. But I think that at the same time, I'm convinced that the problem of the emerging mass formation and totalitarianism uh, can never be really solved as long as we stick to our reductionist, mechanist view on man and the world. Because the, the, the root cause and the ultimate cause of, of the phenomenon of totalitarianism, I agree with Hannah Arendt in that respect, definitely, that it is to be situated in, a, in, in the mechanist, materialist ideology, not mechanist science, because science has nothing to do with it, actually. But it is a scientific ideology. When science turns into an ideology, that means science wants was an answer to dogmatic and, and, and institutionalized religion, but slowly it became an ideology itself. It became a set of dogmas and a set of uh, pre prejudices itself, and, uh, and, and a, a very specific ideology, an ideology which believed that the entire universe could be reduced to a materialist machine uh, and, and perfectly described in a rationalist way, perfectly manipulated and controlled in a rational way. And that rational understanding should be the basis, the cornerstone of human living together. I disagree with that. I really disagree. I disagree in this respect that the rational knowledge uh, is very important. And the process we have been going through as a society throughout the last few hundred years is very important, but only if it leads to the next step. I, I don't know if you're familiar with the work of René Tom, one of the famous mathematicians of the 20th century and one of the founders of systems theory. And he said, ultimately, he said, this part of reality that can be understood in a rational way is rather limited. And the rest of reality, you can only know by empathically resonating with it. And, and, and that, that, for me, it took me until I was 35 years old when I became familiar with the, with the mathematical basis of systems theory, to suddenly start to understand, and it was a true revelation for me, that um, our rational understanding was never capable of grasping the true essence of life around us, and that we needed a different way of knowing the world. And René Tom uh, uh, uses the word resonating knowledge um, to feel or to be connected with the essence of the world around us. Also, Niels Bohr also had this wonderful statement. He said, when it comes to atoms, language can only be used as poetry. You, can't, you, you, you can only use language as poetry when you want to grasp something of the strange irrational behavior, ultimately, of, 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 uh, of, uh, of uh, elementary particles. And it, it also makes me think of several statement of several uh, um, principles in the samurai culture in Japan, where they said that in every art, when you master an art or a craft or something, there is first a stage, this rational stage, in which you learn certain rules, in which you learn so certain techniques that you can understand in a rational way and, you and that you have to learn in a rational way. But the real, the, the goal of the, of, of the learning process is not the techniques in itself, the goal of, the, of this rational stage of, of, of the learning process is always to be, come in touch with something, to start to develop a certain feeling, a certain feeling that you can never, never articulate perfectly in a rational way, but which is the real goal of the, of the learning process. And the samurai said, it's one thing to learn a technique but it's more difficult to forget it again. And if you don't succeed in forgetting it, before you go to the battlefield, they said, you will die on the battlefield. So you need this other type of knowledge, which is more resonating knowledge, which is also a kind of knowledge, which really gives a certain touch, a certain feeling of connection with, uh, with what is out there and which makes you aware, I think, of the eternal principles of, 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 of the real outside of you, the eternal principles of the mystery of all life around you. And it are these principles, I think, these principles, which are like the principles of humanity, the principles of nature, the, princ the ethical principles, um, it are these principles that should be the real cornerstone of human living together and not rational knowledge that no matter how important rational knowledge is, is always 
temporarily. It's always tem- it, it's always it will always be renewed. It will always I mean the real the only thing that can organize a fruitful living together I think is principles and not rational knowledge. Well, um th- that is the basis of several conversations we might have. I have a whole different taxonomy that I have a feeling results in the same conclusion, right? Mm-hmm. My sense is uh, the universe can in principle be understood mechanistically. We are a million miles from the ability to do it on the topics that matter most, right? Mm-hmm. We are in our infancy with respect to understanding biology and psychology and society. Um, so, at some level, we are stuck in the predicament that you are describing, not because the world isn't mechanistic, but because mm-hmm. the mechanisms are so complex that we don't even have the tooling to investigate them yet, right? I mean, if we look at Mandelbrot's um, you know, uh, investigation of fractals as a solution to um, the, bio- the math of biology, basically, right? We needed a different kind of math to even begin to ask those questions. Mm-hmm. And I think we are in the same place. Our science is much better with simple phenomena than it is with complex phenomena because that's where we learn to do it. Mm-hmm. But I 100% resonate with the idea that the whole goal of the exercise of learning things in a conscious way is to stop doing them consciously. That's when you really get good at something. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, um, so we have to think that way. And the other thing I would add, <clears throat> which I heard implied in what you said, is that a mechanistic understanding, even if you had it, even if you had the complete mechanistic picture of the universe, it would not deal with the values issue. You could reverse engineer why we hold the values that we do. But the fact is, we have to, at some level, um, stop trying to justify the values on the basis of the mechanism. It doesn't mm-hmm. work, right? And we have to say something like, um, it is glorious to be alive on this planet. And if mm-hmm. that is true, we are obligated to deliver that experience to people in the future, to not deny it to them by destroying what we have, right? That is an ethical obligation. Um mm-hmm. And if you become too mechanistic, you'll say something like, well, it's all going to be destroyed anyway. There's nothing we can do about it, right? Mm -hmm. The earth will be destroyed. The galaxy will be destroyed. Ultimately, the universe will be destroyed. So it's all for naught. Why are we obligated to, you know, to defend what we've got? And the answer is you just failed the ethical test. You may have passed the mechanistic one, but you failed the ethical one. Mm -hmm. You got the values wrong. So um, in any case, yeah, it's... uh, and what you said at the beginning particularly resonates, right? What you said is that this, um, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it was words to the effect of that science has become not only a mechanism for studying things, but it's become an ideology. Is that what you said? Yes, yes. I, did. I, I agree with this and not a sophisticated ideology either. It's become a very narrow-minded ideology and the, uh, the costumes of science have been taken to be a good indicator of who knows what they're talking about. And mm-hmm. it's nonsense as the Corona mm-hmm. pandemic demonstrated just so extremely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, indeed. Indeed. Yes. And that's a strange thing. When people blind believe, blindly believe in rationality, they end up being radically irrational. That's a strange. That's, that's one of the strange things. When you make science into an ideology, you often believe that you, um, uh, these people who make science into an ideology often believe that they are extremely rational, but in the end, they become radically irrational. That's something very strange. Um, but as you, as you said, um, well, the question as to what extent reality is mechanistic in nature is a very important one. And I think that in the end, we might have a very fruitful disagreement, I believe. But that depends. It depends, of course, whether you, how you define uh, 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 mechanistic, the, the, the word mechanistic, because, yeah, what does that mean, the word mechanistic? Uh, I, I, yeah, do you mean that everything can be reduced to the elementary laws of, 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 uh, of mechanics, uh, the mechanical laws of Newton? Um, how, how, how do we define that? It's, it's, it's not easy to define it. Or, for instance, the mechanisms of language. I, I, I'm, I'm, well... As soon as you 
if you study uh, material reality, uh, at least that's what uh, the physicists of the 20th century concluded, then you soon uh, have to conclude that subjective experience and all kinds of psychological phenomena have a certain impact on mechanistic, on, 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 the, on, on the behavior of, of the material elementary particles. And that for me seems to be an indication that we actually can never succeed in reducing everything to the laws of mechanics, but they can be wrong. I can be wrong. Well, but... I would say we want to, we want to parse this very carefully. Mm -hmm. The, my argument would be as far as we know, everything could be reduced up till the point we get to Heisenberg uncertainty. And then the question is, is Heisenberg uncertainty an observational problem, or is it built into the structure of the universe? I believe it actually has to be built in. There has to be uncertainty mm -hmm. at the ground level. Mm -hmm. But short of that, I would argue that in principle, the universe appears to be comprehensible mechanistically, but in practice, it never will be, right? Mm -hmm. In other words, the... Um, the computational power. It is not the correct way to think about the universe that you could in principle, you know, you could in principle understand a baseball game at the level of the molecules, but mm -hmm. it's not a good way to understand a baseball game. No, right? it, no, it's too it cumbersome. Is. Yeah. And also the, the organizing principle has to be situated, I think, at the level of the intentions of, of, the, of the players involved, I believe. But, but, and also like, well, you know, what's, Definitely certain is that the universe will always be unpredictable. That's something that was very clearly shown by complex dynamical systems theory, that even uh, that every complex dynamical system, even if you know the formulas, the mathematical formulas that determine the system, then still it will be unpredictable simply because of the, char the, char the characteristic of uh, sensitivity for initial conditions in a in complex dynamical system, it will remain forever unpredictable um, because differences in the state of the system that are infinitely small can create a radically different behavior in the system, meaning that you can never measure precise enough to predict how the system will behave. So the universe is definitely unpredictable. So uh, the idea of uh, Laplace that one time there could be a computational force that is strong enough to predict the entire future is uh, rejected. Um, uh, but if that means that, uh, that the universe behaves in an irrational way, that's another question. And I'm inclined to believe that it does actually. I'm inclined to believe that it does behave in an irrational way. Well, yeah, I, I think this is a, a potentially productive disagreement, uh, maybe for another time. But uh, yeah, there, there is a question about why those systems are, you know, is all of that unpredictability the result? Is it cascading from uncertainty at a very fine grained level? I, I believe that it is. I'm, I'm not wedded to that position, but I believe mm -hmm. that it is. And I believe we don't have a fully deterministic universe, but we do have a mechanistic universe. And that's, mm -hmm. that's the difference that I'm arguing. A deterministic mm -hmm. universe to me would make no sense. I mean, for one thing, it would invalidate the meaning that we take from evolutionary dynamics completely. Mm -hmm. If all of those dynamics were set in stone from the moment the universe began, that's a very different phenomenon than uh, an environment in which you have creatures competing over limited resources, which implies that one could win or another one could win and then one does, right? Um, but anyway, this becomes a very uh, yes. intractable philosophical conversation very quickly. Indeed, yes.